Okay, Arnold, so welcome to Whiston House. Um, how did you find out about the COB workshop program? I heard actually through a colleague at a, uh, another meeting. Uh, it was an international meeting in France and uh, was held in somewhat similar circumstances, a small, rather private group, and everybody was enjoying that. And right. um, I mentioned that it would be wonderful to have a similar meeting mm -hmm. discussing evolution of the brain, of the cortex, and uh, it was suggested by this fellow that I should apply to the company of biologists for that. Okay, and um, so that, that sort of tells me, so you decided to organize one because you think there was a need for some kind of a small meeting to really focus on that topic? Yes, I thought, the, I thought it was a very timely topic to discuss in this kind of a setting because there's, at this stage, just a handful of, of labs that are really focused now on human cortical development yeah. and evolution from the perspective of uh, both genetic analysis and cell biology. And so you could actually put those people in one room and I thought it would be very productive to do that. So what exactly do you hope to, to get out of the meeting? <laughs> the kind of concrete aims for this? Well, it's, it's an early stage now uh, where I think people have tools they didn't have before to actually answer questions having to do with cortical development in, in human and primate and in a whole range of different species, uh, both molecular tools and cell biological tools. And so I think it's a very timely moment to actually get people together and start talking about what are the an unanswered questions that are potentially answerable right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and compare techniques, and, and in, that, in this case, it turns out to compare results because people have come here with preliminary data that, yep. uh, that they've discussed that hasn't yet been published. So it's really been terrific. Okay, Genevieve, thanks very much. Um, can you just tell us maybe briefly what you work on? Sure, so my lab's interested in the evolution of the human neocortex from a genomic perspective. Mm -hmm. And um, in particular, how that evolution has made us particularly vulnerable to cognitive disorders like autism or schizophrenia. Okay, okay great. Thanks very much. And um, so why did you want to come to this workshop? Well, I think it's a great uh, group of investigators that, are, that you know cross a large breadth of investigation all the way from the fossil record to yep. <laughs> transcriptomics. So for me, it's been a lot of learning in areas that I'm not normally thinking about outside yeah. of genomics. And do you feel like the kind of format of this workshop has given you the chance to interact with these people from different fields that you wouldn't necessarily have had otherwise? Oh, absolutely. And a lot of one-on-one -on -one interactions um, and uh, great group discussions and potential new collaborations. So great. great. You have potential new collaborations. Absolutely. You think yeah. that's yeah. fantastic yeah. to hear. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks very much. Just tell me a little bit how you're how you're finding the meeting and are you enjoying the meeting? Um, yeah, so the study of human evolution and how the human neocortex became unique is necessarily a very multidisciplinary study. Yeah. And the meeting has exposed me to people who study the fossil record. That's and been great. Fill in it? the blanks yeah. <laughs> about what happened in the last six million years. Yeah. And then people who study archaic human DNA sequence, things that you know, might never have survived. You know, we're so lucky to have this Neanderthal sequence and yeah. now we can look back a half million years at what our genome looks like before our common ancestor diverged. And then people who study developmental biology, comparative development, mm -hmm. comparative anatomy, as well as genomics. So I think you really need to take this integrative view to, yeah. you know, try to tackle this big question. Hopefully, uh, yeah. <laughs> brought these different groups together, which has been wonderful. Great. And so has this given you sort of ideas to take back to the lab and new projects or new avenues to go into? Um, yeah, and also new potential collaborations. That's, that's, that's exactly what we're all about. That's great to hear. <laughs> Good, great. Thanks very much. So can you just tell me what you work on, Zoltan? I am looking at very early steps of cerebral cortical development in mammals. Mm -hmm. and Which mammals? I'm mostly looking at human and mice models. Okay. And I'm very interested in some the earliest generated cells in the brain and how these cells lead uh, to later sequences of development. So I believe that these cells, without these cells, you couldn't build a bigger brain. Okay. So these are the scaffolds of the, of the mammalian brain. Okay, great. Thanks very much. And uh, how are you enjoying the workshop? The, the meeting is fantastic. You, know, you, you never have this kind of uh, mixture. So I go to lots of meetings, of course, mm -hmm. but, uh, but this is unique. You have people talking about endocasts of uh, Neanderthal. It's fabulous, the genome, genome of Neanderthal. You, you, you have chick people here, chick behavior, um, and uh, neuropathologists, psychiatrists, so it's fantastic. Great. And do you feel like that kind of interdisciplinary nature of it is sort of fueling new ideas? 
Yes, yeah, sometimes it's difficult to follow <laughs> the, the talks, but they are uh, inspirational. Great. And um, do you think we're kind of getting any closer to answering the question of how unique we are, which is the topic of the workshop? I think what was interesting for me is uh, um, the, the meeting made me realize that how ignorant we are. And that's, <laughs> therefore, we, we know very little about how unique uh, we are. And, and I think it's due to several facts. One of them is that we use the same three, four model organisms yep. to study uh, brain development and brain evolution. So this has to change. Um, and um, I think um, also we uh, perhaps now we can address some of these questions in a, as a concerted international mm -hmm. consortium. Okay, so Dean, unusually you brought some props with you for your talk. Can you tell us what these are and how these relate to the research that you do? Well, yes, this is a copy of the left side of a chimpanzee brain, right. which shows the cerebral cortex, yep. the convolutions. And these are copies of casts made of, in, um, of the insides of skulls of our early ancestors. Oh, wow. Hominins. Okay. And... Uh, I do research on brain evolution, mm -hmm. and to do that, that, I have to look at skulls and look at the casts from the brain case, which are called endocasts. Right, and so the shape of the skull reflects the shape of the underlying brain. It does, and not it's only amazing. that, but with luck, some of them actually show details of the brain surface that yep. were imprinted in the skull uh -huh. when the animal was alive. For instance, this is the front end of a particular early relative, and it looks like a brain. It's incredible, yeah. yeah. Look yeah, at all those absolutely details. Absolutely amazing. And so from this, you can make some predictions about what brain structures our early human ancestors had and how they relate to our, our, current, our yes. current brain. Yes, and from this, what we try and tell is what did the cerebral cortex of these early relatives, what did it look like, mm -hmm. uh, how much did it resemble us, yeah. our brains, or how much did it resemble eight brains, yep. in this case it's chimpanzee, or was it something in between? That's fantastic. So you, more than pretty much anyone here, are really addressing the topic of this meeting, which is sort of how the human neocortex and the human brain has evolved. Yeah, I don't know how much I addressed that, <laughs> but I did um, address surface morphology of yep. the brain, because... Uh, in the branch that I'm in, that's all you can do. Yeah. Is I can only do the surface of the brain in our ancestors. That's a direct fossil record. That's fantastic. And so, you know, you come from a very different background from most of the people who are here. How are you finding sort of interacting with the developmental biologists and genome people and the neuro? Is that, are you finding that helpful for it, your own it's research? It's incredibly helpful. It's fascinating, uh, particularly the genetics we're mm -hmm. seeing and uh, the details of the microstructure of the cerebral cortex, yep. because of, co of course it will all tie together. Yep. And yeah, and you say you're enjoying the meeting, you're I finding mean, it useful. I uh, tremendously, and I really enjoy the young investigators. Yep. They gave these little six-minute, poor things, you know, <laughs> tell us what you're doing in six minutes. They did a great job. They, it was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, they all did it in six minutes, and I ended up thinking, well, we should always require that everybody <laughs> gives their entire talk in six minutes. But they were impressive. Yeah. They were impressive. Yeah. So these have been fabulous meetings, and I'm so honored to have been part of it. Well, it's been, I've learned a lot from this. I've never, never seen these things before, so it's been great. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So do you think the, uh, that the talks at the meeting have sort of helped us to, to get a better handle on, on how, what the source of human uniqueness is and, and how we go about analyzing that? I think so, yes. I think it at least gives us an idea of where to look. And, mm -hmm. and not only that, but in recent years, the tools have become available to do things that we just couldn't do even a short yeah. time ago. So I think that this is a perfect time, a perfect moment to start phrasing the questions and yep. go after those answers. So I really do think this is a terrific meeting to bring people together and get them excited and, and, and now look forward to the next few years. Right.